What's up, Alatuna Creek? You guys having a good time tonight so far? Awesome. You guys can grab a quick seat. Thank you, Ben. That's awesome. We're going to have you back up here in just a moment. Thank you for leading us. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. We're going to get the bounties going again in just a little bit. We're only halfway through. We're going to have ice cream later tonight. We're going to have live country music. So we are so glad that you're here. My name is Van. I'm the senior pastor at Cedar Crest Church. But if you've never been to our church before, we don't care. We're just glad you're with us tonight because we're part of the community tonight. We just wanted to say that we love you guys. We hope you have a great time tonight. Enjoy the food. I hope we still have some barbecue. I know that the Alatuna football team is here tonight. They might have already eaten all the barbecue. So if you haven't had some yet, you need to get over there. But welcome to the Bucks, to the coaching staff. So glad that you guys are here as well. I just want to take the next few moments to give you something encouraging that you can apply to your life. This matters on Monday morning. Is that, is that helpful for you? You're out here in the sun, you're hot. I might as well give you something that you can use on Monday morning. So here's what I wanna encourage you with. I wanna start by telling you a time in my life where I was ha having to make a big decision. We were living in Germany and we felt like maybe we were supposed to move back here to the US, but I didn't know what the right thing to do was. And so obviously I had a relationship with Jesus and I said, God, if you're listening right now, I need to know the right thing to do. Have you ever been a place in your life where you needed a direct word from God? You need to, hey, what do I do about this relationship issue? What do, God, what do I do about the fact that I've lost my job? God, what do I do? There's so many questions that we might have where we need a specific word from God. And I found myself in that place, and I was praying, God, what, what do we do? What's the right thing to do? I had three little kids, and this meant a job change and the whole deal. And so I was reading my Bible one day, just praying this prayer, God, what should we do? And I opened up to Genesis in chapter 12. This is my paraphrase of what it says. God's speaking to Abram, but it was almost like he was speaking to me. He said, leave where you're living and go to the place that I'll show you. And it's one of those moments where my heart sank because I've been saying, God, are we supposed to move? And then, bam, there I'm reading this verse about God speaking to Abram to move. And I was like, hold on. Now, God, God is that for me or is that, what, what, is that just for Abram? Or what, what do I do with that? So I said, hey, if God, if that's you, would you say that a couple more times for me? I just, man, I, I just got to be honest with you. I, yeah, I do this for a living, but man, there are just moments of, does God really see me right now where I am? Does, can he give me a specific word? A week later, I was in London at a conference, and this guy that I've never met walks up to me, and he says, excuse me, sir, I was standing behind you at the conference, and the whole time I've been feeling like God wanted me to come over and just give you this verse. It's out of Genesis, and the verse is this, leave where you're living and go to the place where I'll show you. And I just thought, oh, who is this? Who are you? You've been showing up in my time at prayer in the morning, haven't you? You know, hey, you know I'm like, you, what else do you know about me? This is a little weird. But I said, God, if that's you, man, it really seems like it might be you, but maybe that's just a coincidence. Would you really show me that you're talking to me? I'm on the airplane on the way back to Berlin, Germany, where we were living and praying this prayer. God, are we supposed to move again? And you told me in my prayer time, I just had that weird interaction with this person at this conference, and what are you saying? I opened up a book that I'm reading, not the Bible, just another book, and at the top of the chapter, there's a verse, just happened to be where I was reading, and the verse said this, leave where you're living and go to the place where I'll show you, and I knew in that moment on that Ryan Air, Air flight over the channel of Britain back to Europe, I knew God was trying to get my attention. And here's what I want you to know, guys, whatever you may be dealing with tonight, that wasn't just for me. God wants to speak to you very specifically. He loves you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. And here's how I know that. Jesus was telling a story one time. You can find this in your Bible in Luke chapter 15. If you want to open that up, you can. I'm just going to tell you the story. Maybe you can look it up later. But in Luke chapter 15, Jesus is speaking to a group of people just like I'm speaking to you. And Luke 15 says that Jesus then told them a parable. Now, a parable is a story that was not something that actually happened. It's a story that Jesus made up to make a point to the people that he was speaking to. And this is the parable that Jesus told that group, and I want to share with you tonight. He said, hey, how many of you, if you had 100 sheep that you were watching, let's say you're a shepherd and you're out in a field and you have 100 sheep, and one of those sheep wandered off somewhere, how many of you wouldn't just leave the 99 because they're together in a group in the open field? How many of you wouldn't go to find the one? You would. He knew this was a, a common answer. They would go to find the one because the others were together. And he said, how much more so when you found that one, would you pick it up, put it on your shoulder and rejoice that you had found the one that is lost and bring it back and then even tell your friends, hey, 
I had a hundred sheep. I lost one, but I found the one that was lost. And now they're all back together again. And then Jesus paused and he said this to the people. He said, in the same way that you would rejoice over finding one sheep that you had lost out of your 100, all of heaven rejoices when just one person says, hey, I want to return back to relationship with God. Because here's what I'm trying to tell you tonight. God wants a personal relationship with you. The one matters to God. You're the one and you matter to God. We, many of us know the Bible verse John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, right? We know that. But you know that when God looks at the world, he's looking at you as an individual. The apostle Paul knew this in Galatians 2. He was writing to the church in Galatia. And he said, hey, you know what about Jesus? He loved me and he gave his life for me. This is the apostle Paul. He wrote two thirds of the New Testament, but he had, he got it. He got it that it was personal. God wants to know us personally. And Paul knew that. I wonder, do you know that? Do you know that I was flying on that airplane back to Berlin? It was a reminder for me that God sees me. He knows right what I'm dealing with. He sees you tonight. He knows exactly what you're dealing with. And all you need to do is just to turn your attention to him and say, God, if you're really there, if you see me, can you give me some guidance in my own situation? A personal relationship with Jesus is what you were made for. So when you walk in a personal relationship, then all of a sudden Jesus becomes your priority. And when Jesus is made your priority, then the power of God that you need in your particular situation is released in your life. When the one is lost, Jesus goes after them. When the one is found, Jesus throws a party that they've been found. Oh, he, he loves everybody, but you are the focus of his attention. You see, he loves the 99, but he goes after the one. Your life very individually matters to God. You are important. You matter. Your life has worth and value. And I wonder, do you know that tonight, that Jesus longs to draw near to you and that anything you're dealing with, again, whether it's a relational friction, whether it's the loss of a job, whether it's wondering, are we supposed to move somewhere? Are we supposed to stay? What do we do? What about kids? Are we starting a family? Are we not? Are we ever going to be able to have kids? What are you just saying, man, if God, if you're there and I can ask you one thing, would you speak to me tonight? God wants to draw near to you. You see, it's the thing, even in my own family, another picture of this. I've got three kids. I love all of my kids the same. But do you know that I love each one of them uniquely? There's a, a shape to my love for each one of my kids uniquely and individually because they're unique and individual. My capacity to love them is the same for each one of my kids, but I love them uniquely because they're unique before God as well. It's the same thing with you. God looks at you and he knows your name. He knows the number of hairs on your head. The Bible says that he knits you together in your mother's womb. That's how valuable you are as an individual. And so the invitation tonight is to have a personal relationship with Jesus. So before we get this party kicked back off again, I just want to pray for us right now in this moment, just to have a, a moment for anyone here who says, man, I, if that's true, I need that. I don't need all the religious garbage. I don't, I don't need all that business. But if God wants to draw near to me, then I, hey, I'm open to that. There's a beautiful picture that Jesus gives us in the book of Revelation. He said, hey, I'm, I'm standing at the door of your life and I'm, just, I'm knocking. And if anyone hears me, anyone, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will have fellowship with you. You can be close to God tonight because he's already drawing near to you. He's knocking on the door of your life. In fact, the very thing that you showed up tonight, that you saw the invitation somewhere, or maybe you were just driving by and saw the bouncy house and said, let's, let's go check that out. That is God bringing you to a place where right now in this moment, you could hear the knocking on your door. And now the question is, do you want to open that door? So I just want to lead us all in a prayer. And before I pray for us, let me just say this to you. After we're done, I know this, this has been very short, but there's a tent right over here. It says next on it. If you want to just know how to take a next step of knowing this God that we love, that loves us, Jesus, who gave his life for you, if you want to know how to walk in a personal relationship with him, if you'll just swing by there, we'd love to have a conversation with you. But even right now, let's just pray together and let's ask God to draw near to us. Let's ask him as we open the door of our life for him to come in. Would you just pray with me? God, thank you that you see us. Thank you that you are a God that loves to celebrate the one. 
And that's why we're out here celebrating tonight, God. That's the reason for the bouncy houses. That's the reason for the barbecue and the hot dogs and the hamburgers and the music, because we know that you're a God that likes to celebrate community. And so, Lord, there may just be one person here tonight who says, hey, I, I, want, I want to step into the relationship that that guy's up there is talking about. God, I know that you are knocking on the door of our hearts tonight. And so we open the door right now and we ask you to come in and do what only you can do. Meet us in our place of need. Maybe just right now, even with the noise going on around you, just right now, whatever, wherever you need God to be personal in your life, to not be somewhere far off, but to draw near to you. Maybe just in the quietness of your own heart, you can just say that thing to him. God, I, I need you in my marriage. God, I need help parenting. God, I, I'm, I'm about to start a new job. I need you to show up. Help me, God. Thank you that you hear those prayers, Lord. Thank you that you're drawing near right now. We love you, and we thank you for the promise of relationship that we have with you. Give us now your Holy Spirit. Give us everything that we need to find other brothers and sisters that we can walk this journey out. And I pray a blessing over every single person, man, woman, and child that can hear my voice right now, all across this park, and maybe at homes across the street. Lord, would you meet them right where they are? We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's sing one final song together. The band's going to lead us, then the bouncies are going to get going, then we're going to have ice cream. Well, let's finish strong, guys. God loves you. Let's worship him.